I trashed my kitchen. I want her back. I don't want this anymore. I, this is awful. Anger? Absolutely. It's my loss. The stone itself is unfinished on the sides because I felt her life was. Visits at 2 o'clock in the morning are not extraordinary. I say, why did you leave me? How could you do this to me? Don't you understand that my life revolved around you? Don't you understand that I miss you? Oh, God, help me to live with my grief. An impaired driver represents two-thirds of the fatalities in single-car accidents. Linda was one of them. You get very little tolerance for foolishness, either your own or anybody else's, and you realize that, that life is very beautiful and it's very sweet and it's very short, and we're all going to die. And Linda's death just made us come up against that fact sooner than perhaps we would have otherwise. And so because of it, we treasure it more. And because of that, we miss her a lot more. In August 1984, Teddy Crisp, his wife, and three daughters were among seven people killed at a bus stop in one of the worst auto accidents in the history of the nation's capital. 42-year-old Robert Williams pleaded guilty to seven counts of manslaughter and was sentenced to a total of 35 years in prison. No chance of parole. We have one infant female who is dead. One infant whose sex is unknown that is dead. One adult male is dead. And one adult female is dead. The macabre roll call confirms drunk driving spares no color, creed or age. And I said, Lord, no. I said, my daughter down there, she's going home. She can go home. She can go catch <laughs> She can go home. In an instant, seven people wiped out. Among them, a family of five, the Crisps. Teddy and Sandra and Sante, Sophia, and two-week-old Tandra. They had to carry me to the mall to see my son. That is when I believed it. I didn't believe it until I saw it for myself. At the morgue, Teddy and his family were numbers. To Sarah Crisp, they were family, flesh and blood, like her five other kids and her other grandchildren. She was shaken, unable to attend the funeral, and the loss affected her health. When they called me to him, the trial was going to be a certain day, and matters of, no, relating to my son were all coming to a head, I had a stroke. There were daily sudden reminders. I walked right into the living room, and I saw my children's picture on television. And I just screamed. And I started crying. I leave, I cried for at least two to three hours. I just let it all out. Ted's sister, Anna Johnson, says the recovery for some in the family has been very slow. Angela was four years older than Teddy. She was the one that had to identify all the bodies. She hasn't been herself since. The family's veil of security has been torn away. Everybody's just overprotective. Robert Williams could not say no to life in the streets, to the fruitless shortcuts. But the crime that brought him here for the rest of his life was not one of his robberies or anything that would earn him bragging rights among inmates. He didn't mean it. He didn't even remember it happening. Only the aftermath. You know, if it was any way that I could have saved them, even by losing my own life, I would have saved them kids. I wouldn't have ran over them, none of them. I was wondering why all them people had to die, and I still lived, you know, and I couldn't understand that because of the type of life that I have lived, you know, and you got seven innocent people and children, you know, and you didn't get a chance to live, see what life was all about. When you're responsible for seven lives that was lost, you know, because of my negligence and my stupidity, you know, you have to, you have to deal with that. Do you wish you hadn't? Made it through alive? Yeah, I wish I had it. You know, because there's it's a lot more suffering to be done. Williams was eight weeks out of prison the day of the accident. 
happy to be free. At 42, determined, he said, to stay straight and not die in jail. But he drank at a wedding reception and also took morphine. He blacked out at the wheel. When you start a drink and you're not driving, you don't think about driving on the influence of alcohol because you're not going anywhere at that particular time. But once the alcohol started setting in and it started to working on you, then you lose, sauce, you lose a sense of, of thinking. There's no rationale for it, you know, stupidity. Williams had cared for more in life than the fast buck. He had been a parent, had held a number of jobs, and had been a drug counselor for a time. You can always fall off the track, you know, at any given time. And the, and the worst thing is to do is to hang around where drugs are. See, and uh, I think that's one of my mistakes. Now I pleaded guilty, you know, to the fact that I was guilty. All I ask is for their forgiveness, that's all. Maybe I'm, I'm paying for all the, all the wrong and everything I've done in my life, I don't know. And maybe that's why I was spared to suffer. They're buried at Harmony Cemetery. And my husband is also buried there. Do you go to the cemetery? I haven't been there yet. Why? I haven't been able to face up to it. But when my mind tells me to go, I'll go. Roxanne White, a mother raising three kids on her own, was convicted of two counts of automobile homicide in the deaths of the Lawson girls in 1982. Three years later, a jury in Maryland, in a record judgment, ordered her to pay $8.1 million in damages to the victim's parents. It was the end of a night out with friends. Sleepy and intoxicated, Roxanne White slammed into the back of a station wagon parked on the shoulder. A mother with her three children had stopped to check a map. Seven-year-old Jackie Lawson and 12-year-old Colleen Lawson were killed, their mother and brother injured. I thought about them. I used to have nightmares over them. In my mind, I was trying to visualize what they looked like. You understand what I'm trying to say? And, and um, I wanted them to forgive me. The anxiety began right after learning of the deaths. For a while before trial, Miss White, who was separated from her husband, could not take care of her own little girls, Carmen and Brandy. I uh, had to get away from them. I was thinking about the other little girls, especially looking at their eyes. You know, I uh, had trouble looking at them in the eyes. It's like I um, had visions of what uh, Mrs. Lawson was going through. Women drivers are not exempt from serious consequences. Roxanne White had her teeth knocked out and facial fractures. There was the humiliation of a highly publicized trial, and she spent 16 months of a two-year sentence in prison. When you're in a place like this or you're in jails, there's very, very few people who considers you of any worth. It's like being in a closet. It's like you can see daylight, but it's still dark. I mean, there's nothing out there that you really want to see, you know? It's like you're screaming inside. Your life is a uh, memory. I sat many nights just looking out the window. It was lonely. People you care about, you know, they're home. You're not there to say goodnight. What bothered me, I guess, mostly at that time is, is saying goodbye to my, my kids because, you know, my children and I were close. I don't, you, you stop. I don't like this interview. They're not going to listen. The majority isn't. Yeah. But we're trying, okay? Because they're pretty well set in their ways. The grown-ups are what they're, they're know-it-alls. Released from prison has not returned life to normal. Once you're outside there, the protection's gone, I guess. Facing people. Uh, Starting over, wondering how people are going to accept you. Her license.